Hey guys, I'm Conlon. I'm a visual effects student in Los Angeles, and today I'm going to show you a tool that I built with my peer Gabriel Martinez for Nuke. This tool is going to allow you to sculpt the look and texture of your 3D renders. The tool is available for free on my Gumroad page and can be installed just like any other gizmo in your .nuke folder. So what does this tool do? Lens texture is something that is very important to cinematographers. They spend a long time deliberating over their lens choice, evaluating the way that different lenses capture the softness and sharpness of scenes. Here are some examples of images that have some very sharp detail, which is made possible by the lens and post-production choices. This sharpness is a specific choice, and it was chosen to suit the narrative and the taste of the creatives involved. For example, David Fincher prefers a very sharp look, and this image is from a show about survival, so the texture here really accentuates that struggle. On the other hand, sometimes a softer look is what is best suited for the image. In this case, while the background is obviously out of focus, the actress's face is in focus, yet still has a soft appearance. This is also the case in this still from Casablanca. In both of these images, this softness is what best suits the creative intent. In this case, Evelyn is a little bit disoriented, so this softness makes sense. And in this case, although it's a little bit of a more legacy approach, they wanted to make this actress's features appear very soft to accentuate her beauty. In CG, we too often discard the idea of lens texture. While cinematographers are making very intentional creative choices around it, we're not really thinking about it at all. Ignoring lens texture is actually a big mistake, as it's an extremely powerful tool. Aside from the broader aesthetic look that it can impart upon our images, such as the overall sharpness or softness, in spatial modes, it can actually make the image more readable and draw the viewer to what we want them to see. In this case, when our eye lands close to the middle of the image, attracted by these contrast points, the general softness of these larger areas, bordered by a little bit of this sharper edge, draws our eye up through the softness towards the sharpest point of the image, where his eye is. This is where we are intended to look, so the softness and sharpness of the image is drawing our eye towards the intended focal point. This is the same case for this image, where our eye lands kind of broadly near the middle, and is kind of propelled through the distinction between larger soft areas and then a little bit of sharpness, all the way to the sharp edge at the top here, which is our focal point once again. So how can we define or characterize the sharpness and softness of an image? If we imagine a painted wall with the alternating black and white stripes in a wave pattern, and we thought about viewing this wall from a slanted angle so that we can see larger shapes towards us, they get smaller and smaller as it recedes into the distance, we can think about it in terms of a low frequency on the left, closer area, and a high frequency on the right, further area. Frequency is all about the size of shapes. So in this case, the area that is closer to us has these larger waves, and as it gets further and further into the distance, the waves get smaller and smaller. So we could think about this image going from a low frequency to a high frequency as we go to the right. If we photographed this slanted wall with a camera, it wouldn't actually end up looking like this. In fact, it would look more like this image on the left. And what's the difference here? We can see this wave, it gets from lower frequency to higher frequency. The difference is the contrast. In this image, we can see it goes from white to black to white to black to white to black. And it does that in lower frequency waves all the way to a higher frequency shape. On this image, which closer represents what would look like if a camera shot this wall, we can see that it goes from white to black to white to black, but then we can actually see it gets slightly less black, slightly less white, slightly less black, slightly less white. So what's happening here? As this shape is getting smaller and smaller, the black to white transition is getting reduced in contrast. It's getting kind of blurry and soft. We can plot this reduction in contrast where up here would be a point of high contrast, and down here means low contrast. And we can see as we go from the left to right, which is to say as we go from low frequency to high frequency, our contrast line stays strong until we get to a certain point where the contrast lowers and lowers as the frequency increases. So what does this mean? We can see that our camera and its lens lose contrast at certain frequencies while they retain it at others. And when that contrast is lost, the image appears softer, and when the contrast is retained, the detail remains sharper. The way an imaging system either preserves contrast or loses contrast, which is to say preserve sharpness or go softer, is called the MTF curve, which just plots contrast over frequency size. Different lenses, shooting settings, camera processing, and post-processing techniques affect the MTF curve, which is to say that they affect the softness and sharpness of the image at different detail sizes. When cinematographers are specifically making choices around this, 
What they are doing is sculpting their MTF curve. As CG artists, we can take a page out of the cinematographer's book and sculpt their texture to best suit our narrative and creative intent. This tool that Gabriel and I built allows us to sculpt our render's MTF curve, making us think more like cinematographers. It's based off of texture sculpting tools from professional DI packages, DaVinci Resolve, and Filmlight's Baselight. Once we've installed the gizmo, we can go ahead and go to our plugins and update them to make sure that we can search for the tool, which is called the Texture Freak EQ. This stands for Texture Frequency Equalizer. If we drop it into our stream, we can see that nothing happens by default because no settings are turned on. Let's explore the settings of the tool. You'll see at the top, we have a mode. For now, we're gonna stay in standard. This Use Test Waveform option is going to give us a visualizer similar to what we saw earlier in the slideshow. We're going to ignore this for now, but I'll demo it later. Next, we have an overall strength, and then the mode that is going to choose whether we output our final result or some visualizers and some technical tools that we can use that I'll get more into later. Now, we just have these six sliders. Broad, coarse, medium, small, fine, and micro. These are referring to size of detail where micro is the smallest and broad is the largest. Any of these sliders moving to the right is going to sharpen details of that size. Moving them to the left is going to soften details of that size. Let's start messing with the tool. I'm gonna to keep the strength on 0.5 and I'm gonna start with the broad slider. Remember, moving it to the right is going to sharpen or add contrast and moving it to the left is going to soften or decrease contrast. If I start moving my broad slider to the right, you might notice that it's kind of hard to tell what changes are happening while we're actively moving it. With all texture tools, including the ones included in Baselight and DaVinci Resolve, the changes that you're gonna be making are going to be kind of subtle, and your eye is going to easily adapt to what the image currently looks like in terms of its softness and sharpness. This means it's very important to turn your effect on and off and display the before and after very frequently while you are working. This will ensure that you're not pushing something too far and you're actually doing the change that you want. So I'm going to toggle this off and back on, and now we can see more of what's going on. As I'm increasing my slider to the right, these kind of large, low frequency shapes are getting sharpened or an increase in contrast. If I drag the broad slider to the left, we're going to be softening or decreasing the contrast of the broader shapes. And remember, always toggle on and off. If we want a view of what we saw earlier, we can use this use test waveform. This is going to make an image that goes on the left side low frequency and increases in frequency as it goes to the right side. This isn't very readable, but if we right click up here and create a new scope waveform viewer, we can actually see that this plots the luminance from left to right of the image. If I set my strength back to zero, you'll notice here we have black to white, black to white. It's just even, the top is white, the bottom is black. One thing that I have to note is if you go to your edit preferences, and then you go down to the scopes over here, you might want to turn off include viewer color transforms and you might want to set a lower black point and a higher white point in order for this to display in a way that makes more sense. Otherwise it might get clamped to SDR values. Anyways, we can now see if I increase the broad slider, what we've done is we've increased the contrast of our low frequency shapes. If I move it to the left, you'll notice it shrinks down and we've decreased the contrast. So this is, can kind of be a nice way to visualize what the tool is doing uh, beyond just looking at the image overall. It, you'll see if I turn it on and off, when I have the slider to the left, what we're doing is we are softening it in the broad frequencies. And I can always dial in my strength up here. One thing to note is that changes with texture are going to want to be very subtle. You don't want to push them too far. And that is once again why it is important to toggle your tool on and off. I'm going to reset my settings. And now let's talk about the coarse slider. As we mentioned, as we go down this list, we get higher and higher frequency, which is to say we're talking about smaller and smaller detail sizes. The coarse slider then is going to sharpen to the right and soften to the left details that are a bit smaller than the broad slider, but still pretty coarse in terms of the overall image. I can once again turn on my test waveform to preview what area of frequency we're affecting here, and you'll notice it's more centered, a little bit more to the right than before. And once again, we can soften and sharpen. The medium is going to be, once again, smaller, so sharpen medium detail and soften medium detail, and always turn on and off on and off. And once again, test waveform, it's going a bit strong there, so turn it down and then we can see 
sharpening and softening. Okay. And then the small, let's talk about those ones. So I'm going to bring small up. I'm going to sharpen saw the small areas. I'm going to zoom in now because these areas are getting more fine. And then I can soften the small areas. Okay. And then same exact thing for fine and micro. Sharpen the fine detail, turn it on, off, on, off, on, off, and soften the fine detail. And then same thing for micro, even smaller detail. And this honestly might even pick up a lot of noise because it is such small detail. Let's talk about the tool in practice. Right here, we have this red sample footage. And let's talk about sculpting the MTF in order to suit our narrative. Let's say in one case, our narrative is that this person is a very soft, angelic person. We might want to use our tool in order to soften the area here. So in this case, what we've done with this specific instance of the tool is we've softened the medium and small areas. And then to make sure that we don't lose too much texture, we've compensated by bumping up the fine and micro sliders a little bit. If we view this off and on, off and on, you'll notice that some of these shapes get kind of smoothed out, which might suit our narrative. On the other hand, what if we wanted this person to be going through a very hard time and struggling? We might want to accentuate the texture of their skin to kind of accentuate this. So we've, what we've done in this instance of the tool is we've bumped up most of the areas, mostly in the small range, and then we've bumped up a little bit of their finer details, and then we've once again compensated, this time on the other side, by smoothing out a little bit of the coarser areas. If we turn this on and off, let me make sure I'm on the right one, turn that on and off, we'll get a more textural, grungy feel, which might be what our narrative is suited for. And once again, we can always increase the strength and decrease the strength, and remember to always toggle on and off to make sure that you're not pushing the look too far. So far, we've been sticking to the standard mode of the tool, which has six predefined ranges of frequency and detail size. If we switch to the single band mode, it will allow us to define our own frequency and detail size that we want to target. The min size and max size are in pixels. So let's say we have the default setting here, 10 to 80, and I wanted to soften the image. It's going to soften everything in between that detail range. If I wanted to get more of my frequencies, I can increase this range and I can slide them around to get specific targets. One mode that I have not talked about yet is this output visualize difference mode. This is going to visualize the difference between the original image and the version that is softened and sharpened in order to make it more clear what areas are being targeted. So if I set this to zero and 60, and then I sharpen it a little bit, we can see the areas that are being sharpened. And then if I go to my final result and turn it on and off, we can see that is indeed the case. If I went and go ahead and increase this to a min size and max size like this, and then I softened it, we can see that this is very, very low frequency, broad detail. A use case for using this single band frequency would be to inject frequency back into an image. Let's say you were working on a beauty commercial where a bilateral filter is something you might be used to. This is kind of like a blur, but it preserves edges better so it doesn't distort the features. What we've done is we've softened the area overall with this bilateral beauty filter, but let's say we've lost way too much detail. If I go to my texture frequency equalizer tool here, you'll notice I have it set to the raw band mode. I'm gonna set it to visualize difference and we'll see what we've done is we've highlighted a specific range of frequencies from zero pixels to 15 pixels, and that is referring to their size. So these are kind of small details and we've gone ahead and sharpened them up. If I set this back to raw band, what this does is it's going to have a lot of data included in it. If I expose up, you'll see all the data. So we can now plus that back into the softened version, and that will be injecting from the high frequency detail back into the bilateral filter. Another use case of the tool is to do color grading adjustments to only certain frequency ranges. An example where this might be useful is with contrast. Right now I'm looking at the original image, and then I'm going to switch to a view where I've increased the contrast. One thing about contrast is that it is increasing the contrast of the image across all frequencies because it is a uniform technique. If we remember earlier though, contrast has a relationship to sharpness. So this contrast increase is inadvertently increasing the sharpness of the already sharp high frequency detail. So what we can do is we can limit our effect of the contrast increase to just the low frequencies. That's what I've done here. 
This is going to increase the contrast of the image without increasing the sharpness of the already sharp areas. So this is the original. This is the adjustment in spatial. So this is the contrast in spatial with our tool. And this is the contrast regular. And you'll see it has more sharpness than we might want. The setup for this is we look at the original image. We use our tool to soften the high frequency detail. If we divide our softened result in the original image, we will get just the high frequency areas. We can go ahead and use contrast on just the low frequency areas. And then we can go ahead and multiply it back together and make sure we're viewing it in our regular color space. And this is going to achieve the look that we want. Another use case of the tool to limit effects to certain frequency ranges is when you're working with 8-bit source material. The compression from 8-bit source material often leads to artifacts with certain operations. In this case, I've skewed the image towards pink, but what it's done is there's lots of artifacting over here. You'll notice this artifacting is kind of a small, fine detail, which means to say that the artifacting is happening on high frequency areas. If we do the same trick that we did with the contrast and only apply this purple effect on the low frequencies, you'll notice that we can make the image purple without affecting that high frequency data that is causing artifacting. The final use case of the tool that I'll talk about today is going to be recreating the effect of the texture highlight tool from Filmlight's Base Light. If we have an image over here, we'll notice that on these sharp highlight edges, we have some color fringing and it's also very sharp. On an SDR display, it doesn't appear too jarring, but in HDR, where this is actually displaying as a much brighter value than its surroundings, this sharp edge might be jarring. The texture highlight tool in Base Light softens sharp highlight edges and also removes some of the color fringing. And we've recreated that setup here with our tool. The basic walkthrough is we first soften the entire image using this tool to remove the high frequency data. This is essentially blurring the image. We then are going to desaturate the image in just the high frequency ranges. This is because while high frequency refers to small detail, it also refers to sharp edges. And so these are this is a sharp edge. So if we desaturate, in just that area, we're desaturating just along the sharp edges. If we go ahead and then soften the image overall, what we've done is we've created a soft area of the image where the highlights have been defringed. If we then make a mask of these areas, we can blend between the original image and this softened defringed image. And this is going to result in an effect similar to the texture highlight tool from Baselight. I hope you can see how useful and powerful this tool is, and I hope that it enables you to think more like a cinematographer in the way that you handle the softness and sharpness of your images and your CG renders. If you find the tool useful, please give a rating on my Gumroad page.